Welcome to Inside APG, creating one community without a gate. Now, here's your host, Tracy Hart. This is Tracy Hart with Inside APG, and I'm very honored to be sitting here with Charlie Rose, who is the director of the Maryland Youth Challenge Program, which runs the Free State Challenge Academy. Mr. Rose, thank you so much for being with me here today. Thank you very much. So the Free State Challenge Academy is an amazing program that helps the youth of Maryland. Can you talk a little bit about what the program is involved? The program is a program that allows kids to get a second opportunity. It's geared towards kids who have disenrolled or dropped out of school between the ages of 16 and 18. They've either been expelled or they've just not been able to keep up or they've had other problems. They can come to Free State and get an opportunity to test for their GED, get an opportunity to learn self-discipline, organization, and get a chance to change their lives around. And that's a big thing for the kids nowadays. They see opportunity within our program. Now, it's located on Aberdeen Proving Ground with the Edgewood campus. Now, the first question people are going to ask is, are you trying to get them ready for the military? No, not at all. We're trying to have an impact on their lives. They will have the opportunity once they graduate from the program. If they want to go into the military, they can. And we do have them as part of the selective service in the uh, age group. We do have them register. But the idea is for them to get an understanding of what they want to do in their lives. How can they accomplish that? establish goals and then set the parameters so how they can they reach that goal where are they going to go with this and they can identify what they want to do we have kids who came here and said i want to be a doctor i want to be a doctor in the military i want to be a navy seal or i want to be a pediatrician i want to be a law enforcement person but the thing is for the kids to understand they need to be able to think about what they're doing here why they're here because it is a voluntary program they need to understand how they can go from this program to the rest of their lives. Basically, it's a 22-week residential program and a 12-month post-residential where we maintain contact with them. We will help them find jobs, we help them place in the community, whether they go in the military or whether they go into college. Some will go back to get their high school diploma if they didn't take the GE test or find a job within the community and that could be almost any type of jobs. So we have a potential candidate who maybe had some problems with school, decided to drop out, looking to move forward with their lives. Can you talk about how the process is from the time they come into the program? What is the process that gets them to that the end of the 22 weeks? Sure. It all starts with an application process and an orientation. We provide an orientation. It's about two hours long for the families and for the kids to show exactly what the program is like. Right now we're doing them here on campus at Edgewood, but this coming cycle we're going to be going out to different locations around the state to take the program to the kids and to the families around the state. Once they submit their application, they have everything squared away. We accept them, then we bring them in for what we call a two-week acclimation period. Some kids may call it like a boot camp, being in a quasi-military environment, but it's a two-week program to get them acclimated to the program, what they're going to be doing for the next 20 weeks. It gives them a chance to change their mindset. We do a lot of PT, physical training. Kids will come here out of shape, and by the time they go home, their parents will ask, well, who are you and what have you done with my child? So they go through the two-week acclimation period. At the end of that two-week acclimation period, we'll have what's called a rites of passage, which is normally... The one we did this recently was a 7.2-mile walk with seven stations intertwined within the the distance. At each station, they had to answer questions based on information that's located in their cadet handbook. They also had to do a series of exercises. At the very end of a very long day, you see how the cadets have learned to work together. They help each other out at each station, whether it be through the questions or whether it be through the exercises and then how they work together to get to the next station. Several kids have a, have a problem meeting that last mile and a half or so, but other kids will come out and help them get that last distance. So we're building teamwork and camaraderie at the same time. We do a, a crossover, and that's when they become full-fledged cadets. We acknowledge them as cadets, and they take an honor code, which similar to what a military academy would be, but an honor code that gives them the understanding of this is what they're here for, and this is what's expected of them, and this is what we want to see from them. After that, They'll spend 20 weeks in the residential program, 16 of which will be in an educational setting. We emphasize the eight core components. We will work on different subjects in schools, such as English and writing, math, science, and social studies. We'll prepare for the GED. Some kids can come here, and they don't have to take the GED if they want to go back to school. But we prepare them to take the GED. We also give them what's called the TABE, 
the adult basic education exam, and that measures their basic reading and math skills. We have a lot of kids will come in here with elementary skills, say third, fourth, fifth grade. A lot of them will leave here with reading levels three to four grades higher than what they entered. And that's the important part. We're not here to help them get their diploma, even though we'll help them prepare for it. But we're here to help them change their lives, increase their educational skills and their learning ability, and to take that from here. We have a five-day exodus during uh, this cycle. It'll be during Thanksgiving. During the uh, spring cycle, it is on the Memorial Day weekend. The kids will be very active in sports programming. They'll be very active in community service because they also have to be complete 40 hours minimum of service to the community throughout different areas in the community and also here on base. We keep the kids very busy and we're basically changing their lives, changing their mindset about what life is about, about what society is about, and what they themselves can accomplish. A lot of kids come here, they've never accomplished anything. When they do the uh, rites of passage, the crossover, that's their first step in this long journey. They've accomplished something and they can take and build from there. Well, there has to be such a sense of pride from the day they walk in to you seeing them graduate, the changes in self-esteem and confidence that they must have. Watching these kids change their lives, not only physically, their body concept, their body mass, if you will. A lot of them will come in and lose a ton of weight, a lot of weight. But they also change in the way they approach other people, the way they accept other people, the way they develop relationships and friendships. They learn how to basically get along and how to succeed. And that's a major accomplishment for these kids who most times have never done that before. That's amazing. Now, we're talking about that this is the Maryland Free State Academy, Challenge Academy. It's obviously open to everybody that's a resident in the state of Maryland? Yes, you must be a U.S. legal resident, Maryland resident, or have an address here in Maryland. It's open to all the youth ages 16 to 18 who have dropped out of high school in all 23 counties in Maryland and Baltimore City. Let's talk about the number of cadets or students that you have here. How many is in an average, say, class? That will depend on how many actually decide to register because it is a voluntary program. The last class, which graduated on uh, January 15th, graduated 102 kids. This class that we just started uh, two weeks ago, we brought in 173 kids, which is the largest we've ever brought in to begin a program. At the end of crossover, we had 151 kids left, which is the largest number of kids we've had in the history of our program. The program's been here for 20 years, sponsored by the National Guard. The program is going to do nothing but grow. We have that opportunity to, to meet those needs, and the program is getting bigger and bigger. We already have applications ready for the next class, which will start in January. So the numbers are there. We're, we're trying to reach out to them and give them that opportunity. Now, you're talking about expanding that type thing, and you talked about the naysayers out there. People are going to ask, where, you know, are my tax dollars going to fund this? Where's the funding coming from for this? Funding will come from the state as well as from the federal government through the National Guard Bureau. The ratio is for every dollar that the state puts in, the federal government will match $3. Yes, it comes directly from Department of Defense through the National Guard Bureau and, of course, from the state. The thing about it, it, it costs roughly between fourteen and eighteen thousand dollars to put one cadet through this program. But what we see, and these are old numbers now, what we see is the return on the dollar is two dollars and sixty six cents for every dollar that's expended on a child here. That's a great amount of money and a great amount of return with what the kids learn because the kids go back into society and become productive citizens. They ask to become taxpayers, but they begin to learn and they begin to support families. They begin to get jobs in higher education. There's many, many stories from not only here but also from around the country from other programs where kids have finished up their program, graduated, and there's one person from uh, Oklahoma who's now working on his Ph.D. in cybersecurity who is a wonderful, wonderful example of what has happened here. So. so we have the program here in Maryland. How many other states have a program similar to it? 27 states have a grand total of 34 programs. The programs have been in existence for 20 years. There are other states who are looking to try to develop a program and, and uh, become members. Uh, Idaho is one of them. Delaware is looking to try to merge with us uh, next year and bring some kids in, uh, only about 20 or 25, because they have a need as well. So it, it's nationwide. Some states have more. Louisiana has three programs. California has two. Now let's talk about from a future standpoint. Is there any kind of job shadowing, or what happens once they graduate? Before they graduate, uh, after they take the GED, we also have what's called job shadowing. We set up arrangements with either contractors or with businesses or even in the military 
or different or organizations around the, the entire region here that want to allow the kids to come in and either learn or job shadow, if you will, what their business is and how they can be a part of that. That can be anywhere from the military. That can be uh, sports-minded folks. That can be labor-intensive, such as either auto maintenance, contractors, what have you. We establish that so they have a chance to learn and, and get a chance to understand this is what it's like on the outside, if you will. That's what it's like when they grow up and what they have to do to, to succeed in society. We even had some kids the last cycle went to do job shadowing in an elementary school here in the county. And each and every one of them came back saying they wanted to go back for more. They wanted to go back. And the kids in the class did not want them to leave. So we can see the benefit from the program. It allows the kids to be able to think and, and dream, if you will. But it gives them the opportunity to think exactly what they want to do and where they want to go. And that's half the battle right there with the self-disciplining organization. Now, you have a unique program within the Free State Challenge Academy called Silver Wings. Yes. We are one of, I believe, two programs in the country that have a Silver Wings program. And that's a program where we teach the kids how to fly. We go to Martin State Airport. We have uh, some members of our staff as well as members who are down at the uh, airport. They own a plane. They are uh, certified uh, FAA instructors. And they give a ground school and they give opportunity to fly over a period of four weeks. Every kid that's in it loves it. They get the opportunity to, to soar like eagles, if you will. And at the very end of this last cycle, the people who run that uh, Silver Wings program gave out three scholarships, if you will, to learn how to get their pilot's license. That's the entire ground school and the entire flight time. That value is well over $10,000 each. Mm -hmm. So the kids get an opportunity to see what else is there. So from your standpoint as the director, what does the program mean to you? Wow. First of all, I, I've been around kids all my life from coaching sports. What it means to me is when, when I see a child, a youth, a kid, walk across that stage at the very end, and I see them crying, I see them excited, I see them as a totally new person from when they came here. I'm an emotional guy, and I have no problem with crying, and I have a hard time talking to some of them when, they, when we do that. But you see a changed person. You see somebody that has realized what life is about and what opportunity rests out there for them to, to grab, the, to grab the golden ring. And when I see that, I become overjoyed. I become overwhelmed because I see somebody who got it. That's a big thing for a lot of these kids. And I have to think, at the end of the day, having people that believe in them, such as yourself and people here, the cadres of the program, having somebody believe in them and push them, you know, that probably means just as much to them as it means to you. A lot of times you're going to find kids come here who will say, well, nobody ever cared about me. Whether it be the uh, teachers in the schools or whether the families, a lot of kids come from broken families. They get here and they see that every staff member here is here for them to help them grow, to help them succeed. We will not allow them to fail. And as I told the kids in the crossover uh, ceremony the other day, I said, failure is not an option. You have taken the first step in a long journey. Now, let's complete that journey and let's understand what is there for you and determine which way you want to go. But you're not going to fail. You will succeed here. So for all the people out there listening who maybe know a child that could benefit from the program, how do they go about finding the information? Is it through the schools? Is there a website? How do they get that information? I would say the easiest way is to go online. Google the National Guard Youth Challenge Program, and that will bring up the, the website for the entire challenge program for all the states. There will be a link on there where you can download the uh, states and just click on Maryland, and that'll bring up our program. We have the application there. gives you all the details about the program from the state of Maryland. If they have any other questions, they can always give us a call at 410-436-3331, and our secretary can direct them in the right place. Well, I really appreciate you sitting down with me here today and talking with us about all the different things that the Free State Challenge Academy does. So thank you so much, Mr. Rose, for being here. Thank you very much, Tracy. And I'm Tracy Hart, and I've been speaking to Charlie Rose, who is the director of the Maryland Youth Challenge Program's Free State Challenge Academy for Inside APG. This has been Inside APG. To learn more about this program or about 970 WAMD, visit their website at khztv.com.